For a few years now, FaZe Clan has been home to some of the most legendary names in CSGO. They're the superstar lineup where proven, accomplished veterans go. But with old legends like Guardian and now Olaf Meister reaching the end of their road with the team, FaZe has taken a detour, opting for younger talents instead of tried and true serial MVPs. After bringing on the 19-year-old Brokey in September of last year, things were working out well. FaZe ready to win this! Plopsky's coming up from Catwalk. He sees the first, but now he sees nothing, and it's just defeat. Phase 16-12. And Phase doubled up on the strategy with 16-year-old B Mass from Lithuania. But unless watching Eastern European FPL matches is your hobby, you probably haven't heard much about this rookie. So, who is this adventurous adolescent who's been deemed worthy of stepping onto the front line beside the likes of Nico, Rain, and Cold Zera? Throughout 2019, Oromus Bemas Piperus was a young player grinding on the Face It Pro League who showed lightning fast improvement. From qualifying in May to being first place in October, his rapid rifling through the ranks turned heads and drew comparisons to Brokey. Team wise, he'd mostly play with loose collections of players and eventually get up to one of the higher ranks in his home country of Lithuania and boast a 60% win rate at high levels, all while just turning 16 in the second half of 2019. Towards the end of that year, he joined up with the wonderfully named Leet Thuania, who were used to entering their smaller regional tournaments and progressing to the semi-final stage or beyond. Shortly after joining, in November of 2019, he brought the team to a win in the Baltic Masters Season 2 Finals, beating Wartex in three straight maps. BMAS performed exceptionally well, with a 72-54 score and a 1.27 rating. For an FPL player not used to tournaments, it was the best result imaginable, and it was his first tournament with the team. The end of the year came, and as HLTV conducted its interviews with players in its top 20, they asked Nico who his bold prediction was for 2020, and the prediction turned out to be far more bold than expected. There's this guy Bmas from FPL who really surprised me. I watched him a couple of times, and I think he's pretty good and a pretty versatile player. He's not going to be in the top 20 next year, but I believe he's going to be a big thing. I believe he has the potential to make it to the top and do some good things. The name Bmas stuck with people. The endorsement of any legendary player is nothing to sniff at, but Nico in particular has a proven eye for future stars. His latest bold prediction was Rops, which came just a few months before he signed onto Mouse Sports and became a star fragger for them. It turns out Nico's an avid spectator of the up and coming Eastern Europe scene, and BMAS's FPL performances, even more so than the tournament win, attracted Nico's eye. Over the course of the next few months, BMAS would continue to grind in FPL, and the Lithuanians would reach the semi final of the BESL Pro Season 5 finals based in Latvia. Doors, Bemis with one, Bemis looking for the second, they're coming through, they're coming through doors, they're coming through window, and Bemis is staying alive, and he's 20 HP, but no, JL again, he doesn't have the time, speed. no way, and Bemis is just celebrating it. Meanwhile, a not so well kept secret within FaZe was that Olaf was feeling burnt out, and wasn't feeling it anymore, and it was showing in the server. When he finally announced his retirement, it didn't take long to find out who was going to take Olaf's spot. But they're looking at Bemis. 16-year-old Lithuanian player, relatively unknown, doesn't really have much team play experience other than just some mixed teams that he's done here and there. It looked like Nico was going to fulfill his own bold prediction, and it represents somewhat of a change in FaZe's strategy. With Brokey and now BMAS, there's a real intention to invest in youth, as opposed to solely grabbing accomplished, experienced players towards the end of their shelf life. I'm no more oh, he kills Bound. Bemas with a stellar 3k transfer. Bemas is still technically a stand in, but nonetheless, it's extremely rare to see a top team go for someone so green. You have to deal with he's looking the wrong way. The transfer from Bemas again. At the time Bemas signed on to play with FaZe, he still hadn't taken on any top 30 teams. But when Bemas joined, FaZe had already been proving the idea of signing a rookie for months. With the addition of Brokey, who had been working out great, everyone seemed a little more sold on the concept, and there were definite advantages. A big one is that both players came free, but that's not the only benefit in bringing in such young players. In terms of style, Nico will undoubtedly see it as an opportunity to mold Bemas into the kind of great player FaZe needs. And in the online era, a rookie like Bemas will be less affected by the big crowds at events. Remarkably, since he started playing with FaZe, Bemas actually performs better against top teams. His normal rating of 0.92 versus the top 50 opponents steadily increases as the competition gets fiercer, eventually reaching a 1.09 rating for opponents in the top 5. Only time will tell if this is a stat for the online era or not. 
Just ask Na'Vi, who had beaten FaZe the last three times they met before DreamHack Master Spring 2020 in Europe. Three versus one, the AWP on the retake. I don't think he has what it takes. Na'Vi eliminate FaZe from the tournament, and they're going to the Spodek. When they went up against a BMAS powered FaZe, the youngster dropped a 45 to 30 score in the series with a 1.37 rating. Oh, but BMAS, no! Leave him alone! He's turning them up! Oh, the pistol's out, and BMAS is just making Na'Vi look like fools in the apartment. Undoubtedly, there's mentorship going on. But in that match, FaZe displayed a lot of confidence in their younger members by having Brokey and BMAS hold the B-sides on Mirage together. And here, and he's getting pressured. Wow! Oh, does he answer the call? He's going to put up three. And now it's simple. And Boomich left to try and turn the tide. Two on four. Brokey here as well. And once again, it's BMAS and Brokey holding down this round for FaZe. And they just might find the map on the back of it. You've got to get past simple. And BMAS will. Four in the round for him. One for Brokey. For me, I'm really impressed the way like uh, Bimas approached the team, like how much he's he's working just to like get used to all the roles, all of head. He's watching Demos all the time. He's doing everything he can to learn as fast as possible. And since he started playing with FaZe, the team has reached third at DreamHack Master Spring. Nico up in the site, catches the back on the wow. boost, and Brokey's gonna follow up. FaZe, they get it done in two. Third at Blast Premier Spring. It's called Zero, and it's going to be 16 to 9. A 2 0 victory for FaZe as they bring down Vitality. And third in Gamers Without Borders. 3 2 1. Jobs are good, and 2 0 FaZe. That's going to be the MR12 format. They had a brief period when they went from seventh to third in the world. Not every match brings a lot of frags like the one against Na'Vi, but the arrangement has just started, and what matters is the team itself is doing well. He's gonna see the barrel of the offer, but he gets caught in the crossfire, and Nock, he's gonna have to do everything. He knows he's in no man's land. BMAS seals the deal. Just as BMAS has dived deep into learning all the phase positions, the team will be learning how best to use their young fragger. Yeah, it's way easier to play right now with him because he's just getting used to all the positions and he's still learning a lot, which is really good. And uh, it was very hard in the beginning because it was very hard to fit him in the role that he got instantly, right? We didn't know how to use him. Now we are just trying to use him kind of as like explosive, like entry figure, just let him run in first, let him like spray transfer everyone. So we are still like trying to switch up some roles, but uh, he's still mostly just getting used to the all of Solky here, but he's doing it way, way, way better than he did at the start. So far, the signs point to face putting effort into molding this new prospect for long-term gains on a free signing. Together with Brokey, that would be two big wins if they can make it work. And so far, all signs point to this being the strongest iteration of FaZe in quite some time. Oh, he gets the second. Now Steel's coming in from short. The bomb's gonna be planted, but it's covered by cold. 16 to 12 for FaZe Clan. What do you think of the new FaZe experiment? Should they stick to signing proven superstars? Or is investing in youth the way forward? How do you expect BMAS to fare when crowds come back to Counter-Strike? Let us know in the comments, and don't forget to like the video and subscribe for more esports content.